We are restless, irritable, and discontented until we can again experience a sense of ease and comfort which comes at once by taking a few drinks or drugs. What is this spiritual malady talked about in AA, the big book, and all the fellowships around addiction and alcoholism? What is the feeling we get of discomfort in our own skin and like we just don't belong until we alter our state of mind and emotion with some kind of substance? This video is going to cover exactly what a spiritual malady is, some points you may never have heard about, why alcohol and drugs solved this for us for so long, and what the solution is when we don't feel okay with or without alcohol and drugs. My name is Adam Vibe Gunson. I'm the founder and executive director of Recovered On Purpose, a nonprofit organization with the sole mission of helping addicts and alcoholics find recovery and live a life of purpose and joy in their recovery. If you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel and let me know in the comments anything you relate to or think I missed about our spiritual malady. First, what exactly is the AA Big Book talking about when it mentions a spiritual malady? A spiritual malady is referring to a profound sense of disconnection and unrest that we alcoholics and addicts experience. It isn't just that we have a feeling of ugh, otherness from the world, but it is a deep-rooted sickness of the soul that drives us to seek ease and comfort that we experience from mind and mood-altering substances. An interesting distinction many alcoholics and addicts in recovery have come to understand is that the drugs and alcohol were never the problem. They were the solution to our problem we had within ourselves when we did not have the drugs or alcohol. Funny enough, for alcoholics, this solution to the spiritual malady was found in alcohol, otherwise known as spirits. Whether you are a spiritual or religious person, you have to find the irony in walking up to a bar which looks eerily similar to an altar at a church and give your penance or your tithe or your money in order to receive your spirits to solve your problem. I wonder if there is a more powerful spirit than these spirits capable of solving all our problems. The Big Book of AA describes alcoholism as a threefold disease, a physical allergy, mental obsession, and a spiritual malady. In my own experience and in the experience of millions of recovered alcoholics before us, when we work on solving our spiritual malady, the mental obsession subsides and the physical allergy ceases to take place from that first drink or drug. The physical allergy is when we take the first drink or drug and the phenomenon of craving takes hold of us and we do not know when or if we are going to be able to stop. The mental obsession is this curious mental blank spot that after swearing off alcohol and drugs forever, after losing everything in our lives from it and feeling hopelessly sick, we still inevitably succumb to the thought that this time, I will control it like a normal person. The spiritual malady manifested in people like us is perfectly outlined in the big book on page 52 with the bedevilments. Tell me if you have ever experienced the following. We were having trouble with our personal relationships. We couldn't control our emotional natures. We were a prey to misery and depression. We couldn't make a living. We had a feeling of uselessness. We were full of fear. We were unhappy and we couldn't seem to be of real help to other people. These bedevilments are trigger points for us in our recovery to know that we are dealing with the spiritual malady associated with untreated alcoholism. These bedevilments will drive us deeper and deeper into a hole of dissatisfaction and disconnection with life and drive us to a relapse. We must get back to the work of our program for this to be relieved. What exactly is this work of our program? Well, for 12-steppers like myself, this means doing an inventory of the situation and resentments going on, 10th-stepping it with someone or basically just talking to someone about it, and then turning our thoughts and actions towards someone we can help. These principles work for people with a spiritual malady from alcoholism or drug addiction, whether or not you are a 12-stepper. Talk about what is going on honestly with someone you trust who has some spiritual authority with you, and then focus your thoughts on someone you can help. The latter part of that suggestion is the most important. Imagine this. You're sitting across from someone and they are listening to the problems you are having with life and helping you talk through them and release them. They are there only to help you. They have no other motives. They are not a paid professional. They are there just to help you. The spiritual void we have in the pit of our chest and stomach right around this area is filled by the space between one addict and one alcoholic helping one another. The space between us is that love we talk about. The space between us is that God universal powerful enough to solve all our problems. And that space between us, while we are helping each other, fills that hole in us, thus solving our spiritual malady. Now imagine this, you're on the other side, 
and I'm coming to you for help working through some of the things in my life causing this spiritual malady to show up. You are there to help me decipher through the fog and get down to the root causes. And most importantly, you are there with no ulterior motives. You are only there to help me. Whether you are the helper or the helpee, the space between us is the power greater than ourselves that fills our hearts, fills that void, and solves the spiritual malady. That's why you hear me say over and over, the solution to this thing long term is to constantly be in service of other addicts and alcoholics, doing everything you can to keep in service on a daily basis. When we lose that space between us for too long, the void shows back up, the spiritual malady takes back hold, and the bedevilments manifest into our lives. We need each other, but we are also so blessed to have each other. Until next time, get out and help someone new this week and keep living Recovered on Purpose. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about 12-step work, click right here. Or if you want to listen to positive affirmations for addicts and early recovery, click right here.